Now we are going to move to the code to execute once we click on the save button. So we want to be able to click on this button and save our work for the next time we open the app. So to do that, we're going to use the HTML5 local storage. So using a local storage, we can store some data on the user's browser. So to do this, we're going to use an object called local storage. Okay. There is another object called session storage. And the difference between these two is that local storage is going to be used to store data with no expiration time. While the session storage is going to store data for the session of the user. So once the user closes their browser, all the data is going to be lost. So in our case, we're going to use the local storage object. So let's do a simple example for now. So we're going to store some simple data. Okay. And then we're going to check once we load the app again, that we still have that data available. So first, we are going to check that the browser supports local storage. And to do that, we're going to check the type of the variable or the object local storage. Okay. So we're going to check if the type is not equal to null. Okay. One equal sign would be enough. Then we are going to store some data. Otherwise, we are going to send an alert message saying that your device or browser does not support local storage. By the way, most modern browsers, they will support this, okay? So to store data, we are going to use the object lo local storage and we're going to use the method set item. Okay. Then we're going to have two parameters. So the first parameter, we're going to place it inside a string and that's going to be our variable. So let's call it X. Okay. So the second parameter is going to be the value we want to store inside that variable. And let's go for five, for example. Now, when we load our page, okay, let's check that we have this X variable. So to get the variable or the variable's value, we're going to use again, local storage. And this time, rather than set item, we're going to use get item. Okay. And it's going to take one parameter, which is our variable inside quotes. Okay. So before getting the value of our variable, we can check that this is different from null. Okay. Because if the variable, if the variable is not there, this is going to return null. So if this is not null, okay, we are going to print an alert message saying that X is there, and it is equal to the variable of X which is going to be local storage dot get item x. Okay, so let's save this. Also, let's make sure that our code at the bottom is executed only once we click on the save button. So we're going to place all this code inside the click method. And 
we are accessing the save button using its ID. Okay. Now let's save. So if we click on the save button, we're going to create a variable x in the local storage and assign a value of 5 to x. Okay. So now if we refresh our page, we can see the alert message, x is there and it is equal to 5. Okay. Now we are going to use local storage to store our canvas. So first of all, let's change the name of our variable to something else. So I'm going to call it image canvas. And the value this time is going to be an encoded URL, which is going to contain our graphical data. So to guess that URL, we are going to use a method of the canvas itself. So just remember that this is the canvas element and not the context which we use for drawing. Okay, so the canvas refers to the graphical data. So we're going to use a method called to data URL. So this is going to return a URL or encoded URL containing our graphical data. Okay. So we can add an alert message showing us what they, that URL looks like. So to get the URL, we're going to use get item. Okay. And we're going to use the name of our variable inside quotes. Okay. Now let's go to the other bit of our code. So now we want to load our saved work or our saved canvas. So we're going to check if the variable image canvas is there. Okay. So if it's there, so rather than sending an alert message, we are going to create an image. And then we are going to draw that image inside our context. Okay. So to create an image, we're going to use an image constructor. So you're going to create a variable. I'm going to call it image like this. And I'm going to use the image constructor. And to do that, we need the keyword new. Okay. And then we use the constructor and we don't need any parameters. Okay. Now we can use the context to draw our image. But before we do that, we need to make sure that our image is loaded. So to do that, we're going to use an event of the image, which is onload. Okay. And we need to set that to a function where we're going to draw our image using the context. So to draw the image, we're going to use a method of the context called draw image. So it's going to take three parameters. So the first one is the image variable. And then the other two are going to refer to the coordinates of the points where we're going to start drawing our image. So if it's 0, 0, the image is going to start from there. Okay. So since our image is going to refer to our previous canvas, the size of the image is going to be the whole size of our canvas. So if we start from 0, 0, then that's where our image is going to take place. Okay. So I'm going to go for 0, 0. Okay. And now we are ready to set the source of our image. So just remember that as a general rule, we can't set the source of the image until we use the onload event. Okay. So now to set the source of our image, we're going to use the source property and we're going to use the value of our stored variable. Okay. 
which refers to the encoded URL that we created there. Okay? So now let's save our code. Let's draw something. So if we click on save, we can see the encoded URL which contains our graphical data. Okay? So we see this because of the alert message that we have written there. Now let's close this. If we refresh the page, we can still see our work. Okay, so we have stored our work successfully in local storage. Now let's just delete the alert message. Okay, and save our code. Now let's try again. Save. If we refresh, we can still see our work. Okay. Now let's move to the color and width inputs. Let's start with the width input. So we know that we're going to set the line width by sliding the handle of our slider. And we're going to do exactly the same thing we have done to the diameter of the circle using the slide or the slider code. So let's just copy that code after our comment there. Okay, so we want to set the context line width using the same value we have used for the height and width of our div, which corresponds to the diameter of this circle. Okay, so the line width is going to be context dot line width. Okay, and we're going to set that to the same value we have used earlier. So now if we save, if we change the width, we can see that now our line takes a new width. Now let's move to the color inputs. So once we change the color using the color picker, we want to do a couple of things. So we want to change the color of our circle and also we want to change the color of our line which corresponds to the context stroke style property. So let's start with the first step which is changing the color of our circle. So we're going to access the color input first using its ID. which is paint color. And then we're going to use the change method, which is going to take a function as a parameter. Okay. So we want to change the color of our circle. So let's access the circle or select it using its ID, which is circle. And then we are changing the background color of our circle using the CSS method. So you're going to use two parameters. So the first parameter is going to be background color. And the second parameter is going to be the color we want to change to. And that's going to be the color of our input. So we need to get the value of the color input. And to do that, we're going to select our input and use the val method. So you can select the input using its ID. Otherwise, we can use the keyword this as we are already inside a method which is applied to the element itself. Okay, so we're going to use the val method. And now if we save and change the color, we can see that our circle changes its color. Okay. Now let's set the color of our context, which corresponds to the stroke style property. So if you remember, we have set the color of our context earlier inside the mouse move event. Okay, and we chose a red color to start with. So now we are going to set this to the value of our color input. So let's access 
the color inputs using its ID, which is paint color, and then use the val method to get the color. Okay. Now let's change the color. And now we can see that it's working. Okay. Now we finish the code. So after all, we don't need any functions inside our code. So let's test the functionalities of our app and make sure that everything is working. Okay. So let's reset the canvas and save. Now if I reload the page, then we start in from here. Okay. So let's draw something. Let's draw a banana. And let's use some colors. Okay. And let's have some lines inside. Okay, now if I save my canvas and reload the page using F5, okay, we start exactly where we left, okay. Now if we click on the Erase button and we increase the line width, you can see that we are erasing things, okay. And our app now is complete. Congratulations, you have just created a highly professional drawing app using HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, jQuery, and HTML5 Canvas. You had a chance to review many of the skills you have learned in the complete web development course. If you created something different, then please share with me and other students. I look forward to seeing you finishing other projects and becoming a highly skilled and professional web developer.